In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Kindly be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, we are here in this life to echo the life of Christ to grow in wisdom and age like him, to reach out like him in healing to the wounded of the world, to have compassion on the weak and suffering, to make our hearts known to our friends and family, to take up our crosses, to forgive others and be forgiven, to find mountain places for prayer, to have the courage to oppose evil. That litany could continue but these facets of Christ himself are alive for us today because we glimpse them in the life and love of our dear Father Stanley Miranda. He was born on 5th August 1930, ordained on 31st of March 1964, and he died yesterday, 19 July at 7.30 a.m. God gave him a long life of 91 years. One of the beautiful things Father Stani Miranda spent most of his life in the formation of priests and religious, in seminaries teaching ethics and moral theology. He worked in St. Joseph Seminary, Mangalore, Vidya Jyoti, Delhi, St. Peter's Seminary, Bangalore. He, was, he also was the rector of St. Joseph Seminary for six years, superior of Fatima Retreat House, superior of Sadhana Lonavala, and superior of the Mungod mission. He was also a spiritual director and was involved in directing retreats and in pastoral ministry. What strikes me most about him is that he was a people person. He knew how to celebrate life and he knew how to endure suffering, especially at his end. He always celebrated life and was always positive in his thinking. He believed in lay collaboration and was instrumental in starting the Xavier Technical Institute. He had a heart for the poor and the needy and helped a lot of people. He was patient and serene during the evening years of his life, never a complaint, always a smile. And like an angel, he went back to God yesterday. One of the mysterious features of God is that even breakdowns are not wasted. 
He gave Father Stanley a time for preparation, for purification, to surrender to his will, to participate in his own suffering. And Father Stanley never asked why the suffering. Instead, he responded by saying, what can I make of this suffering? And that's where we need to learn from this great man. In a world where the greatest disease of today is that many are unloved and uncared for by everybody, the community of Fatima Retreat House with its caregivers has dared to do otherwise. Father Maxim Miskit, the superior, Father Joseph Montero, the minister, Vanita, the nurse, home nurse, Harish, the caregiver, have walked the extra mile in taking care of Father Stani. Many things that this community has learned in times of illness of Father Stani. They began to practice kindness, concern, sensitivity, initiative. This community came closer in suffering. Most of all, they realized their smallness and their littleness and practiced humility. My dear brothers and sisters, when our hearts are weeping for what we have lost, the soul of Father Stani rejoices in what it has gained to go back to its creator and we thank God for this beautiful gift of Father Stani. Kindly rise. To celebrate this Holy Eucharist for the repose of the soul of Father Stani Miranda and to ask God the forgiveness for his sins and for our own, let us spend some time in silence. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Stani Miranda, your servant and priest, whom you honored with the sacred office while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved by sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with a sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear Bishop, Fathers, brothers, and sisters, we have gathered here today not so much to mourn the death of Father Stanley, rather we have, we have gathered here today to celebrate, not to mourn. Celebrate what? First of all, to celebrate his Christian, priestly, and religious life, which he entirely dedicated to God and for the service of the people of God. Secondly, we celebrate his birthday in heaven. All of us celebrate birthdays. When we were born in this world, however, our birthday in heaven is more important than that <coughs> because we are in this world only a few years. Our eternal home is in heaven with the risen Lord. And that is why we should not mourn too much. St. Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians says, you people should not mourn Lord at a death like the others. Our mourning should be tempered and therefore we discourage them from mourning when a Christian was dead. God in his goodness <coughs> When God created the world, he did not have in his plan the death of mankind. God's plan was to take those who were born in the world, take them heaven without death. However, death came through the sin of Adam and Eve. St. Paul says, death is the wages of sin. The sin of Adam and Eve, who unfortunately fell prey to the cunningness and deceit of the devil. Devil is the enemy of God, and he always sees how to disturb and destroy God's plan. And that is how death 
came into this world and all the sufferings which are connected with death and even our own death and our own suffering in this world. However, God so loved the world. He did not want people to be lost because of sin. The door of heaven was closed towards mankind. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost their divine life which God had given them. But God had his own plan. He sent his only son into this world to set right things. And Jesus, by his passion, by his death, and by his resurrection, he opened the door of heaven for us. He gave us the possibility of forgiveness of sins. And he made us, all of us, children of God. And that is why we are very, very unfortunate to have a Savior, a Jesus, who died for us and rose for us. Everyone who dies is with the Lord, with Jesus. And therefore, we are very, very grateful to God that he loves the whole world. Therefore, we should not be afraid of death because of the redemption which Jesus has wrought out for us. We Christians know we always go to heaven provided we have lived a life which was taught to us by Jesus, by his teachings and also by life. And we must not mourn too much. Rather, we should also celebrate the birth, our birth in heaven. In the church, we celebrate feasts of the saints. On which day? Not on the day they died. The day of their birth in heaven is celebrated. That day we celebrate the feast. Therefore, when we mourn, the death of a beloved one. We are all humans. We have all feelings naturally. We have certain sorrow when a person close to us dies, but that should have a limit and rather our stress should be more for celebration because our own dear one is in heaven and the birthday of that, birthday of that person is on the time of his death. That is why we see lives of the, in the lives of the saints. They were most ready to die. Not only ready, they were happy to die. St. Paul said, I long to die and be with Christ. He wanted to be with Christ and he told his Christians, because of you, I am living to teach you how how to live a Christian life, that's why I'm here, otherwise I prefer to go to heaven. Saint Teresa of Avila, the great saint, <coughs> she said, I want to see God, that is why I want to die. And Saint Teresa the Lysia, when she was dying, she told the sisters, I am not dying, I'm entering heaven. So we as Christians should look at death in that way. <clears throat> Not only the saints, even I have seen ordinary people dying peacefully and joyfully. There was a father who taught me philosophy when I was, being, I was getting ready for ordination during the formation. That father was teaching me philosophy. Unfortunately, he had cancer and he had only few days to live. And when he came to know he will not live longer very much, he shook hands with all those fathers who had come to see and they were in his room. He shook hands with them. And after that, he saluted them, said bye-bye, and then he died. I know another father, 
he dug his own grave and he sat at near his grave and he prayed for a happy death we also should always pray for a happy death that is what the church teaches us therefore we say forgive us our sins pray for us not only now at the hour of our death we ask our heavenly mother to pray for us at the hour of our death because we want to be prepared for death because we know we are not created for this world we are created for the other world <clears throat> i even know a sister whom i knew very well she had cancer and doctor would had told us that she has a few days only to live when i went to see her i saw her so peaceful and she spoke to me joyously and therefore dear brothers and sisters we should look death in that way as the bible teaches us and we should not mourn long and some celebration we should have because our loved one has gone to heaven and he is with jesus brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the glory of his holy church grant we pray almighty god that through these holy mysteries stani your servant and priest may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully minister here through Christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through Christ our Lord for as one alone he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying as one man he chose to die 
so that in your sight we might all live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Father Stanley Miranda, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take you away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Stani Miranda, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Friends, kindly be seated for a moment. On behalf of Father Provincial, Reverend Father Dionysius Voss, and all the Jesuits who are gathered here, I want to thank Most Reverend Bishop Peter Paul Saldana in a special way for celebrating this Holy Eucharist. He had many works, very important works, and also meetings, yet he made time for the Jesuits and celebrated the Mass. This shows his love for us and his generosity. Dear Bishop, I express my heartfelt gratitude to you. Now we shall rise for the final funeral blessing. I offer my heartfelt condolences to the family of Father Stani Miranda and especially to our extended family, the Jesuit community, the provincial, all his brother priests here, friends and relatives, that the Lord may console you. However old a person is, we miss him. I also gratefully acknowledge the share he had in my life as my professor in the seminary and for two years or two courses we had him in philosophy so i thank him and all the good things he has done in our seminary at mangalore and for the people at large in our diocese may the lord grant him the eternal reward as he has promised to those who believe in him With faith in Jesus Christ, we reverently bring the body of our brother, priest Stanislas Miranda, to be buried in its human imperfection. Let us pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise, raise up this mortal body to the perfection and the company of the saints, May God grant him a merciful judgment and forgive all his sins. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, lead him safely home to be at peace with God, our Father. And may he be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of the Eternal King. Friends, kindly be seated. Now I have requested Father Tom Cordres to express his sentiments and also his experiences with Father Stanley Miranda. At 7.30 in the morning yesterday, 
Parastani winged his flight to heaven. Thus, his 91 years of life, near 91 years of life here on earth, came to an end. No, it did not come to an end. Padastani only moved on to life unending, to be with his creator and Lord. Because for God's faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. Born in Cassia, Mangalore, Padastani grew up living life to the full. Father Dennis Raskina, who is also with us here in our residence, who is about five months older, was his good friend and companion. They went together to St. Aloysius School and College. They played cricket on the Kankanadi ground. When Father Dennis joined the Jesuits, Father Stani too felt God's call and followed his friend about a year later and entered the Jesuit novitiate in 1952. Ordained priest in 1964, Father Stani was sent for studies to Rome to prepare himself to teach in the seminary. He returned with a doctorate in moral philosophy and theology, and he was assigned to the Jesuit St. Joseph Seminary, wherein he taught for many years. He has also served as rector there, and also as the parish priest of the Jeppu Parish. Later, Father Stani has also served as professor in other theologates like St. Joseph Seminary, Allahabad, Vidya Jyoti, Delhi, Jnana Jyoti, Anekal, for some years. He was also superior and director of Fatima Retreat House here. And during his tenure, he has brought about growth in retreat ministry and overall campus development. He has also served as pastor in Mundgod, a rural parish in Karwar Diocese. I wish to highlight a couple of typical traits of Father Stani. Deep down, he was a man of faith, a Jesuit and priest in steady and deep contact with God. He nourished himself daily, celebrating the Eucharist, the Mass, pondered on the Word of God, and prayed the divine office. Thus, he sustained his faith and close relationship with God. Father Stani was a man of the heart, very much with a heart for the poor. During his sojourn in St. Joseph Seminary, Jeppu, where he was rector and parish priest, he has helped many parishioners to build their houses and help them generously. He was fatherly to the seminarians and has also reached out to many of them for their family needs. He did the same also when he was the parish priest in Mundgod. Father Stani was a priest, friendly, simple, approachable. He always had a welcoming face and a welcoming word for whoever approached him, Jesuits, priests, religious, or lay persons. People felt at home with him, and we Jesuits enjoyed his sociable nature. Father Stani was a down-to-earth, compassionate man, and we, though well-educated and trained to teach ethics and moral theology, his feet were on the ground, quite in touch with ground realities, whether they be family struggles, moral issues, marriage conflicts, financial hardships. He had a heart 
like the heart of the good shepherd. Not only was he non-judgmental and respectful, but he would go out of his way to help couples and families. For the last 12 years, Father Stani has been here with us in the Fadima Retreat House Jesuit community. In the earlier part of those years, he served with retreats, masses, confessions, and personal guidance. Later, as his health deteriorated, he was confined to his room and needed continuous assistance. Whatever pains and ailments he had, he accepted and bore them in humble faith surrender. His non-complaining, silent endurance has always amazed me, edified me. Dear Father Stani, thank you for the person, the Jesuit and the priest that you were all along. Thank you for the immense good you have done in innumerable ways, whether teaching and forming priests in the seminaries or quietly helping many a poor for housing, education, medical or other needs. Thank you for walking the talk, showing us how to be compassionate pastors. Thank you for contributing your might to bring about God's kingdom in our world. Using Paul's words, you are already being poured out as a libation and the time for your departure has come. You have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for you the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to you. Farewell, dear Father Stani, our dear brother. You are in a better place now, being freed from all that enslaves us. As you know, our world today is a scary valley of sorrow and tears. So while you are resting and refreshing in the bosom of the Father, do smile on us, intercede for us, and send down God's blessings that all of us need, blessings that our world needs. Bye for now, dear Father Stani, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Friends, today I want to thank God Almighty for the gift of Father Stanley Miranda to the Society of Jesus and all his contribution to the Karnataka province and to the people of God. As we have heard in the homily and eology, he was a faithful servant, a gentle soul. All his sufferings he bore so joyfully and peacefully. May the Lord grant him eternal rest and peace. I want to thank our dear provincial Father Dionysius Voss for his presence and who will be performing the last rites of Father Stanley Miranda. Thank you, Father Provincial, for your presence. I also want to thank Father Terence Farias for preaching the homily and Father Tom Codrus for sharing his sentiments and experiences of Father Stanley Miranda. I want to remember all the relatives and friends and also students of Stanley Miranda who are present here with us and those who could not make it because of COVID-19 pandemic protocol. I want to thank all the doctors, nurses, staff of Father Muller's hospital and especially Sister Janet for her timely and kind help. I express my gratitude to Father Melvin Pinto, the rector, and the Jesuits of 
St. Aloysius College community for all the cooperation and assistance. I want to thank specially the superior of Asha Kiran, Father Rani Pius, and all the scholastics for the beautiful choir. Thank you very much. I take this opportunity to thank, in a special way, our Fatima Retreat House community for the whole hearted cooperation and supportive presence and their solidarity. I want to thank, in a special way, Miss Vanita, our nurse, the caretaker boys, Mr. Arish and Anil, the FRH staff, Ashok, Subhash, Patrick and Stephen, and all the co-workers of FRH for their generous service. A word of thanks to Santosh Arranges for all the beautiful arrangements they have done for the funeral and also Daiji World for the live streaming of the whole event. If I have missed out any names, I once again express my heartfelt gratitude to each one of you. There will not be procession to the cemetery, therefore you may take your own vehicle or can I request some or you can request someone to take you to the cemetery for the last part of the funeral service. I request kindly maintain a physical distance, wear your mask and all those who have not yet paid homage to Father Stani may do so after the final prayer. Kindly come in two separate lines on either side of the coffin and exit from the either side and proceed to the cemetery. Now we shall rise for the final blessing. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Give him eternal rest, O Lord and may your light shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Father, into your hands we commend our brother, Father Stani Miranda. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, he will be raised to life on the last day and live with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessing you gave him in this life to show your care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints. Lord, hear our prayer, welcome our brother to paradise and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ to be with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
until that day when you the resurrection and the life will raise him up in glory then may he see the light of your presence lord jesus in the kingdom where you live for ever and ever since almighty god has called our brother stanley miranda from this life to himself we commit his body to the earth from which it was made christ was the first to rise from the dead and we know that he will rise will raise up our mortal bodies to be like his in glory we commend our brother to the lord may the lord receive him into his peace and raise up his body on the last day let us pray for our brother stanley miranda to our lord jesus christ who said i am the resurrection and the life the man who believes in me will live even if he dies and every living person who puts his faith in me will never suffer eternal death he was nourished with your body and blood grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom we ask this in in faith your response lord hear our prayer lord you wept at the death of lazarus your friend comfort us in your sorrow we ask this in faith you raise the dead to life give our brother stand eternal life we ask this in faith you promised paradise to the thief who repented bring our brother stanny to the joys of heaven we ask this in faith our brother was washed clean in baptism and anointed with the oil of salvation give him fellowship with all your saints we ask this in faith comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our brother let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope we ask this in faith this is singer here we make this prayer through jesus christ our lord Amen. we shall say together give him eternal rest o lord Amen. and may your light shine upon him forever our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be. Let us offer one, our Father, one Hail Mary, and glory be to all the Father's souls who we have buried here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we do to the Lord, and lead us on to the nation, and deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed the fruit of from Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 